Hi all, welcome to my channel. This video is about my preparations details for AWS ML Engineer Associate exam. AWS has recently introduced two new certifications in machine learning and AI. One is AI Practitioner which is the foundation level and the second one is the associate level which is ML Engineer Associate. Regarding my experiences of AI Practitioner exam, I have created another video. I will give you the link in the video description. Unlike AI Practitioner exam, you have less percentage of questions from the Gen AI Bedrock and LLM areas. In this exam. Questions were around SageMaker features and functionalities and then some about managing your data using Glue, Athena, S3, Redshift, EMR etc. And of course security related there were a couple of questions so KMS, Key Management Service and Secrets Manager were also touched upon. I prepared for this exam only for a week but that is because I have done multiple certifications in the past. All those learnings actually comes handy when you go for any new certification. But if you are fairly new and if you haven't taken many certification exams maybe you will take two to three weeks to prepare for this exam. The exam is moderately difficult but if you prepare and focus you should be able to clear the exam in the first attempt itself. And in this video I will share with you the specific topics, specific areas from where I got the questions. I am not giving the questions but I am giving very specific topic name so that if you understand that particular concept you will be able to answer those questions. Okay with that introduction let's begin. I will share with you the materials which I used, the practice test I took and how much I scored in the practice test, how much I scored in the official practice test and finally how much I scored in the final exam. Let's begin. As the first step of your preparation, you can go through the exam prep training provided by AWS. Let me open that here. So here is the list of trainings. If you go through learning plan structure, you can see there are multiple courses here, 45 minutes, one hour. These are all small courses. So based on your requirement, you can go through any of these courses and you can learn the particular topic. And once that first level of reading is done, as the next step, you can start going through the practice test. So you can buy one set of practice tests from Udemy. There are many practice tests available, but I will just suggest the practice test which I used which is by Stephen Marek and Abhishek Singh. So here it is. It has 100 questions. So a 35 question practice test one and a 65 question full length test. So there are only two tests. So I took this and uh, I analyzed the answers after each test and I updated my notes and that actually proved to be useful. So buy one set of practice tests from Udemy or any other providers and then go through that. You can take test number one and analyze the wrong answers and update your notes. That's what I did and you have to repeat the process for test number two as well. So I took only one full length practice test but I suggest that you take at least two full length practice tests. You'll be able to buy some other practice test from some other provider in Udemy. And before each practice test try to go through the notes which you have already prepared. And finally take the official practice test. There are some 20 questions in that and if you are able to get something like 60 percentage 12 out of 20 you are ready for the test. Actually I scored only 12 out of 20 in the official practice test this one and still I went ahead and booked my exam two days from that day and I was able to score some 76 percentage. This is the official practice test which you can take for free. Now if you need additional practice materials you can use the exam study guide from Tutorials Dojo. I will give you the link in my video description. You can go through it. For now I will just close this one. Or you can take any Udemy course. Earlier I talked about the practice test from Stephen Marek. You have the exam preparation course also from Stephen Marek and Frank. So if you want to take that you can take that. So I am talking about this particular course it has some 850 plus slides which you can go through. Many of those topics may be common with other AWS certifications as well. So if you have taken other certifications, you don't need to go through all those video lessons or slides. You need to keep the initial preparation short. Go through any one material and don't spend more than a couple of days, I would say. Even if you are able to get only 20% of what you read, that is okay. You just go through it once, then start taking your practice test and then you will understand which areas you are actually weak in. And then accordingly, you can read or you can prepare your notes and go through it. And usually I give my practice test scores so that you can also compare it with what you get. So I got 71 percentage in the Udemy practice test one which had 35 questions and when I took number two I got 78 percentage. There was some improvement and this was a full length test. But when I went to official practice test you can see that it dropped from 78 percentage to 60 percentage. But still at that point I booked my final exam because from my past experience I know that if you are able to 
score somewhere like above 60 percentage in the official practice test you should be able to clear the final exam so i went for the final exam and i scored 76 percentage so that's about my practice test scores now what happened on the exam day or what were the type of questions etc there were no questions were lengthy so that usually happens in the specialty exams and uh, professional exams the questions will be lengthy only three multi-answer questions were there in professional exams you could see up to 30 multi-answer questions and there were five questions of new type you know they have introduced new type of questions like match the following sort of questions or ordering they will give four or five different actions in a particular process and you'd select it and order it three of them so these questions were comparatively easy that's what my experience was so you don't really need to worry too much about that and then there was a case study with four questions so the advantage here is that you have to read the case study only once and then you have to answer four questions so you save a lot of time in understanding the context of the question so this is what happened on the exam day and i spent around 60 minutes for completing my first pass in which i left 11 questions unanswered and 18 questions uh, with flag and then it took another 45 minutes for me to complete these 11 plus 18 questions so try to give yourself two to three weeks to prepare you could spend two hours per day for your preparation and if you can claim 30 minutes extra accommodation if you are not a native english speaker you can claim that 30 minutes extra accommodation please go for that and look for keywords in the question such as cost effective or least overhead or least operational effort etc in for many questions i selected the final answer based on these specific asks like cost effective least overhead least operational effort etc so ensure that you specifically read that part of the question and keep that in mind while selecting the answer Now the most important part and the most useful part of this video, key question areas. Actually, whatever I talk to you in this particular section, if you understand these concepts, you will be able to answer the questions. SageMaker pipelines, very important. There were at least three questions and autopilot, there were two or three questions. Data Wrangler, four or five, very important. So please spend enough time understanding that bedrock, two or three questions. Kinesis Data Firehose related, there were a couple of questions. Then Glue, there were two. And Feature Engineering, two or three questions were there. Feature Splitting, logarithmic transformation, binning, one-hot encoding, etc. If you know these concepts, you'll be able to answer those questions. And clarify, especially explainability related, bias related, there were a couple of questions. Model monitor, there were two or three questions. SageMaker debugger, there were a couple of questions. Data drift, there was one question. And model drift related, there was another question. SageMaker jumpstart, one or two questions were there. Then accuracy related, one question was there. It was something like a use case where both false positive and false negative are critical. So which metric you will go for, something like that. Then F1 score related one question. F1 score is decreasing. You please find the reason for that from the given choices. The canary release, there was one question. And uh, shadow variant versus production variant, there was one question. But when I say shadow variant versus production variant, I'm not saying it is asking for the difference. You have to pick one of these. So only if you understand what are these two, you'll be able to answer that. Hyperparameter tuning and Bayesian optimization, there was one question. EMR related one question was there. Basically in EMR, it was something like choose which type of nodes from core node, task node, and master node, which one can use port instances, something like that. And then reserved instance for SageMaker related one question was that XG boost, how to avoid overfitting. Basically from the given options, you have to choose which one will help. For example, max depth, increase, decrease, etc. Then cloud formation. Cloud formation, the question was about identify the resource type to be used to create a model, something like that. Then SageMaker model registry, there was one question. Random cut forest, one question was there. EKS, community service, one question. PCA, principal component, analysis one straightforward question was there and then early stopping then trainium instance type related one question was there so you have to understand what are the advantages of that fsx for luster there was another one and SageMaker experiments and rag rag is part of your gen ai you have to understand that even bridge and kendra were also covered then entity recognition comprehend related question learning rate related question dag this is what i was talking about earlier which is related to SageMaker pipeline so try to understand these concepts S3 partitioning and parquet, there were questions. Q developer, there was a question. Data brew, there was one. And lake formation related, there was one question. Then Kendra, how it can be used for semantic search, etc. Redshift machine learning, there was one question. Then Macy and AWS budgets cost management, there were questions on these topics as well. Then recognition was covered. Poly was covered. Compute optimizer, there was a question. And the KMS and secret manager, there were questions on that. So all these topics, if you understand these topics, 
topics well you will be able to answer the questions and i have listed some 45 topics here if you know all these topics definitely you will be able to get some 30 plus questions correct and it will help you in passing this particular exam okay and one important tip i want to give you when you are preparing for this exam just go to your management console go to SageMaker and go through each of these menu items here for example studio and if you come down here you will see studio has multiple features like data wrangler so it says what data wrangler is and processing data sources feature store what is feature store what is clarify and then if you come down under build studio notebooks algorithms autopilot what is autopilot jumpstart and you can see that in my list also i have listed many of these meaning there were questions on this then SageMaker experiments automatic model tuning debugger there were a couple of questions then multi-model endpoints model monitor model monitor there were a couple of questions pipelines there were several questions so go through each of these menu items and understand what is canvas what is r studio what is tensor board profiler you will be able to answer 30 percent plus questions just by understanding these menu items in SageMaker. with that we are coming to the closure of this video i wish you all the best for this exam once you complete this exam please come back and provide your thoughts in the comments i'll be very happy to see that and i'll come back with more useful videos please consider subscribing to my channel thank you bye